Today we're covering linear, quadratic, and exponential models because these functions can be used to model some sets of data. Now, this is all stuff that we've done before, so it's not really anything new, but what we're doing is bring it all, bringing it all together in the same lesson and looking at them next to each other. So, what's going to happen? First off, let's review what we've done thus far. This first graph, hopefully y'all all can tell that's a line, so we know that that is a linear function. And the general equation for a linear function in slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Now, later we're going to talk about this, but I want to go ahead and emphasize it here. We're going to be looking at the difference in the y values, and we're going to see that it's constant whenever we have a linear function. Constant meaning it never changes. All right, this next shape that we have looks like a u. So hopefully you remember that that is a quadratic function. And our general equation for quadratic function is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And here, the difference of the differences in the y values is constant. And again, we'll talk about that more detail later. And the last picture that we have, graph that we have, would be that of an exponential function. Exponential function and the general equation we're going to work with is y equals a times b to the x. An exponential function is where your variable is in the exponent. And when we have an exponential function, those y values won't have a common difference, but they're actually going to have a common ratio. So the first method that you can use to decide which function models your data is to actually graph it. So if I come down here and graph the points, I have 0, 0, I have 1, 1, I have negative 1, negative 0.5, and then I have the point 2, 3. So hopefully you can see, you might think that that is a linear, but if it were linear, then I would be able to draw a line and connect all those points. And there's no way that I can position that line and get all of those points. So this is not linear. It's clearly not quadratic. So hopefully you can tell by looking at it that it is exponential. Okay, our next set we have negative 2, 11, um, and on this grid, if my every other tick mark is by 4s, that means this one's going to be by 2s, so that negative 2 up to 11, because that's 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, that's halfway between 10 and 12. At negative 1, I have 5. At 0, I have 3. At 1, I have 5. So you can see from there, my graph is going down, and then it clearly turns direction and goes back up. And that should be enough for us to model it with a quadratic function. Okay, so that's looking at the graph. Now we can also look at a set of ordered pairs. And if you're looking at a set of ordered pairs, you probably want to put it into a table first. So we're going to write, we have negative 1 times 0 0.5. We have 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 8. So they want us to use differences or ratios. And remember, difference is when we subtract. Ratio is when we divide. So if I look at my differences first, let's go look at the differences. And actually, every time you do this, you do need to look at both sides. So if I look at the intervals between these numbers, hopefully you can see that I'm just counting up by ones. So the intervals on this side is one, and each interval is one. Now I look at these differences. This is what we call my first differences. And 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5. 2 
minus 1 is 1. 4 minus 2, we always start with the last one and subtract the one that comes before it, is 2. And 8 minus 4 is 4. So those do not have a common difference. So from there, I'm going to go to the second differences. The second difference, I'm going to go back up here for just one second and write up here. This is the difference of the differences. Uh, some books refer to that as the second differences. Uh, a little bit uh, easier to say. So keep in mind that when I talk about that, that's what we're doing. We're finding the difference of the differences. So 1 minus 0. 0.5 is 0. 0.5. 2 minus 1 is 1. And 4 minus 2 is 2. So we do not have any common differences here. So that means now I need to go look at the common ratio. All right, I looked at my differences, didn't have anything in common. So I look at my ratios, and again, you always start with the term and put, put it on top of the one that comes before it. So I'm going to put 1 over 0. 0.5, and that's going to be 2. I'm going to put 2 over 1. So I did 1 over 0. 0.5, 2 over 1, which of course is 2. I did 4 over 2, which is 2. And I do 8 over 4. I have to write it over here. I'm out of room. And that's 2. So if you notice, my ratio is the same every time, and that's enough to tell us that we have an exponential function with this set of data. Okay, one last example. We have uh, a table showing the annual income of a small theater company, and they want us to tell them what type of function best models the data, and then write an equation to model that data. So we actually have two things that we have to do. We have to tell which type and write an equation. So we have a theater company, annual income. You can go graph it, but those are some large numbers. I'm going to look at my intervals of the top numbers. Remember when my charts go sideways that the top number is usually referred to as X and that bottom number is Y. And as you look at those numbers, we do see that they are going up by the same amount each time. So now I'm going to go look at the differences here. Uh, 18,730 minus 18,254 gives me a difference of 476. Now if I subtract these two numbers, 19,215 minus 18,730 gives me a difference of 485. Subtract those two, I'm going to get 480. And subtract those, and I'm going to get 480. Now you might look at those numbers and say, well, they're not exactly the same, but they're pretty close because they're all um, really close to probably 480 here. And considering the, the only difference between each other is five. And when you're talking about $18,000, then that means these are really basically the same. So that means that my common difference, my first set of differences that I have, that's what we were looking at here, is the same. And if that's the same, then I'm going to say that I have a linear function. Sometimes you can kind of think about a theater company, what's actually happening, and most often their annual income is not going to grow exponentially. It's just not one of those things that happens in the theater. Anyway, now we have to write an equation, and our model for um, a linear was y equals mx plus b. So let's remind ourselves that m is represented by the change in y over the change in x. So we look at those numbers and you want to know which one of those you want to choose. This number is in the middle and occurs most often, so I'm going to choose 480 over my change in x is 1. So we simplify that and it becomes 480x plus b in our linear function is always with 0. So when you have 0, the other number is going to be your b. 
So I get to write y equals 480x plus 18,254. And that is the function that models our data, and that sums up linear and quadratic and exponential models.